Hello friends, today we are discussing transition curve. This is also the part of horizontal alignment of a road and in another video we have discussed the design of horizontal curves. A curve which is provided between tangent point and the circular curve is the transition curve. So if you see here, you have a straight road and there is a change in direction and that direction change is effected through a circular curve. So the transition is provided between this straight road and the circular curve. And this radius of transition curve changes from infinite at tangent point to the straight road to the radius of circular curve at joining point with the horizontal curve. So why do we need to provide transition? As you know, a vehicle experiences centrifugal force as soon as it enters a horizontal curve of radius r, whereas there is no such force on tangent length. If the curve is attained suddenly, then this force will also develop suddenly. It will naturally cause a sudden jerk to the vehicle and discomfort to the passengers. Transition curve is provided to gradually introduce the centrifugal force between the tangent point and the beginning of the circular curve and thereby avoiding sudden jerk on the vehicle. It is also provided to increase the comfort of passengers, to introduce the design super elevation at desirable rate, to introduce design extra widening and to enhance the aesthetic appearance of the road. The requirements of a transition curve so that it can satisfy all the needs of horizontal curve the curve should be tangential at its junction point so that the radius of the transition is infinity at a straight junction and r at the curve junction. And I explained to you that at the beginning of the transition, it joins the straight portion of the curve and therefore radius should be infinite. And at the end of the transition length, the radius of transition should be equal to radius of circular curve. The rate of change of curvature should be uniform throughout its length and the length should be sufficient to accommodate the total super elevation. Now these are three requirements and based on these there are three types of transition curve which are generally used. One is a spiral curve or clothoid curve, cubic parabola and third is lemniscate. Now this is the difference between these three curves. The three curves are more or less similar for a very low deflection angle. The cubic parabola, as you know, y is equal to a into x cube. The Bernoulli's lemniscate is also a good curve to be used, but the spiral curve is the one which satisfies all the conditions of transition curve here. The radius changes with the length. As the length increases, the radius of the curve reduces. And therefore, IRC suggests a spiral curve as the ideal transition curve due to the following reasons. Number one, it satisfies the rate of change of centrifugal acceleration is constant. That is LS is the length of transition. LS into R is constant throughout the length. And the calculation and field implementation of a spiral curve is simple and easy. And it enhances aesthetics also. Combining a spiral with or without intermediate circular arc allows greater design flexibility, particularly when space is limited and large directional changes are involved. For example, at a clover leaf interchange where directional change is 270 degree. Now in this case, the spiral curve is the best suited curve because here when you are turning to right, you take a direction change of 270 degree. Now this figure shows you three alternate curves for connecting the two intersecting roads of a clover leaf interchange. The interchange is a high speed area where the driver must decelerate, negotiate the curve and then accelerate to match the speed of the uh, turning road. Now green line here, this green line outer curve is a single tangent circular curve arc and it takes more space, its primary shortcoming is the tangent curve, tangent transition and centrifugal force condition which would require lower speed 
and high amount of super elevation. Now this red system here, it is a five centered point, five centered compound curve of various ADI better than the green one as it will require lesser space but it can still be problematic at curve curve transition where you have two curves they are meeting or different ADI because forces can change substantially at these points. The blue system is a spiral curve. Uh, this is a symmetric system at the entry and exit. It provides a smooth speed and directional change. It is the most comfortable and it will require the least space. And this is the reason why a spiral is considered to be flexible and it is preferred in highways. Length of transition curve is also important. And this length is decided based on two parameters, rate of change of centrifugal acceleration, which decides the comfort to passengers, and rate of change of providing super elevation, and how the super elevation is provided. Now based on rate of change of centrifugal acceleration, or you can say comfort to passengers, the uh, radial acceleration is given by this equation, V square upon R. Now at the beginning of the transition curve, the radius is infinite because it is tangent length and therefore A will be 0. At the end of a spiral, the radius will be equal to radius of circular arc and A will be the maximum. Now let us say T is the time in second to cover the length of transition LS at design speed V. Then this time T will be given by length of transition divided by the speed of the movement. Now during this time t, the maximum radial acceleration will be introduced, starting from 0 to the maximum. And therefore, the rate of change of centrifugal acceleration will be v square upon r upon ls upon v. Now this is the radial acceleration and the time taken by the vehicle to cover this acceleration or to get this acceleration. Now C here is called rate of change of centrifugal acceleration. So this will be equal to V cube upon LS into R. This value of C now depends upon the speed, it depends upon the radius of circular curve and it also depends upon length of transition curve. Now if you rearrange the terms in this equation, length of transition curve can be estimated using this equation V cube upon C into R where C is the allowable rate of change of radial acceleration. Now this C depends upon the speed and it is given by this equation 80 upon 75 plus V. IRC suggests that for comfortable ride C should be 0.8 to 0.8. The second criteria is based on rate of change of super elevation. And in open area this rate of change of super elevation is 1 in 150. In urban area it is 1 in 100 and in hilly area it is 1 in 60. Now total width of the pavement on horizontal curve will be the width of carriageway plus extra widening of horizontal curves. And if you take a small e as the super elevation then maximum rise of the outer edge with respect to inner edge will be e max equal to e into w plus w e. Now there can be two cases. Case 1 is when the pavement is rotated about the center line, then in that case the length of transition will be equal to half of E max into N, that is the rate of change of super elevation. Or you can say that LS will be E into N into WE plus W upon 2. E is the rate, is the super elevation provided on the horizontal curve, N is the rate of change of super elevation and W is extra widening, W is the pavement width and half of it because the pavement is being rotated about center line. In case the pavement is rotated about the inner edge then it will be E into N into W plus W E. IRC suggests that minimum length of transition curve for plain and ruling terrain should be equal to 2.7 V square upon R and for hilly and mountainous 
reason it is v square upon r where v is the speed in kilometer per hour and r is in meter radius of horizontal curve so you can determine the length of transition curve it is the maxima of three values one based on rate of change of radial acceleration second based on rate of change of super elevation and third the minimum length as suggested by transition curve so the actual length will be maximum of these three when a transition curve is provided in field there is one parameter which also is important that is shift now this is the tangent length of the road and here is a circular curve and between these two we provide transition because transition is parallel in shape and this is circular curve so this circular curve is moved slightly inward and that is called the shift s the amount by which the the uh, circular curve will be moved inward that is called the shift now the shift is given by this equation length of transition is square divided by 24 r so with these parameters we can take now an example to illustrate the procedure of finding the length of transition curve determine the length of transition curve for a horizontal curve of 450 meter radius on a national highway in plain terrain having a design speed of 90 km per hour the width of pavement is 7 meter and at this radius no extra widening is provided and super elevation is 0 0.07 or you can say 7% so the given data here is that speed is 90 km per hour and radius is 450 meter. Super elevation is 7 meter and rate of change of super elevation can be 1 in 150 because it is in plane area. So based on rate of change of centrifugal acceleration, LS is V cube upon CR where C is 80 upon 75 plus 90 that is 0.485 which is almost equal to 0.5 and that is also a minimum value of c so we take 0.5 as minimum value of c and you calculate length of transition by this equation as 69.6 meter or you can say 70 meter the second criteria is based on rate of introduction of super elevation now here small e is 0 0.07 w is 7 w e is 0 because no extra widening is provided n is 1 in 50 that is rate of super elevation and therefore if you assume that the pavement is rotated about the inner edge that will require more length of the transition so equation is e into n into w plus w e so 0.07 into 150 into 7 that is 73.5 meter this is the second criteria and the minimum length as per irc code is 2.7 v square upon r and that gives you length of transition is 48.6 meter so actual length to be provided in field will be maximum of these three values 69.6 73.5 meter and 48.6 meter so 73.5 meter or let us say 75 meter so that is how the length of transition is estimated thank you very much for watching this video please write your feedback thank you